Good morning. I'm excited to see you guys this morning. Um, it is uh, a cool summer morning right now, so I thought I would enjoy a little time outside. I did my quiet time this morning and decided I didn't want to go back inside, and I would just podcast it here. Um, it has been a while since I've done a solo podcast. So it's always a little, um, I don't know, it takes slight adjusting when I haven't done it in a while. But we'll see how it goes because I do have animal noises out here um, and some a little bit of car noise. That hasn't been bad this morning though. But lots of birds and lots of chirping. So we'll see how that sounds once I listen to it back. Hopefully it'll work out. Um, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. All my information I will pop up here in terms of my um, Instagram and my Etsy yarn shop and my Ravelry patterns page. Okay, so this is the Swiss tee and this is my own design. Uh, I love this top. It's made out of cotton and it's, um, I love this cotton. I got it at Hobby Lobby, I think. Um, and it's very soft and it's knit in two pieces and it's up fairly quick because I think it, I think size six or seven needles maybe, has the little decorative cross stitch here and then eyelets. It's called the Swiss tee because it reminds me of Swiss cheese with all the little holes in it. Um, I do wear this quite a bit in the summer. Okay. So I do have an acquisition. It's this lovely basket. Now I had seen a while back, if y'all watch a lot of knitting podcasts, you've probably seen a homespun house. And she used to sell these baskets. Um, they're like a fair trade type thing. And um, I don't think she can sell them now that she's back in Germany. But I think while she was in America, she was able to sell them. Anyways, I liked them, but I ne never ended up getting one from her. And then we were at a 4th of July, like, vendor fair, craft fair type thing with my parents. And um, there was a vendor selling these. And my parents got it for me for my birthday. My birthday's still in another month and a half. But they went ahead and gave it to me anyways. <laughs> so, isn't it cute? It's bigger than I realized, so it holds lots of good knitting, and it's cute. All right, I don't, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> so last time I talked to you guys, I was with Ashley, and we talked about dream knitting, and one of my dream knitting things was I'm going to be calling the dream cardigan and I have written the pattern it's about 75% done or so um, I just have to finish all the detailed numbers in the grading so it went from dream knitting to finished object isn't that crazy it knit up so fast so fast and I absolutely love it. This is for my daughter. Part of the reason it knit up so fast is because it's, you know, not adult size. So, of course, it's shorter and the sleeves are shorter. But it wouldn't have taken much more time to knit one for myself. So that makes me very excited. Um, so, again, I'm going to call it the Dream Cardigan. The pattern's not out yet. But I'm working on it. And I held one strain of fingering weight yarn plus a strand of mohair. And I did a different colorway than I was talking about doing for her. Um, this is the bloom colorway and the mohair. And you can see how it really takes the color and kind of tones it down when you add the white to it but in a very beautiful way. I, I love it. So 
So you can still see the purple, the blue, and the green in the colorway, but it's got this white halo all over it. So it's a top-down seamless raglan cardigan, open front. I did, for hers, I did this decorative edging, um, sort of like a scallop edging. Let's see how well it's showing up on there. Um, it pulled a little bit on the collar, so I don't know if I'm going to put this in the pattern or not. I'm having a hard time showing to you. There we go. Um, I like the way, I mean, it's cute when it, but I don't know. It's not perfect. And for myself, I just want a big, like, shawl collar. But she has already worn this. Has a little bit of balloony sleeves here. She brings it to her um, co-op classes and to her Sunday school class. Anything where she's going to be indoors and it might be cold. And she loves it. And she's already gotten compliments on it from her teachers. So, we homeschool and the kids do a co-op class. Uh, and it started a couple weeks ago, which is hard to believe because it's still very much like summertime, weather-wise. But I just love it, and I just love how the yarn knit up, and I love how quickly it knit. And it's lightweight and fuzzy and soft, and it's, it would be so warm. I can't wait to make myself one. Okay, so went from dream knitting to finished object. Like in an instant, it feels like. <laughs> Although that could have something to do with the fact that I haven't podcasted in quite some time. <clears throat> okay, the next item to show you <coughs> is something else very exciting. And I think this was also in my dream knitting. So I think I'm doing a good job actually accomplishing um, the stuff that I want to accomplish or plan on accomplishing. Okay, this is the Ghost Horses Sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I have it on itty bitty circular needles. These might be 24 inch circular needles. So it's really hard to see everything in it. But you can kind of see, you can kind of see how pretty it is. I really like it. I love how the colors are working together. And I like the pattern, of course. And I like how the horses have shown up. Let's see if I can show you without making them fall off my needles here. Okay, there we go. All right, can you see it? Can you see the horse? <laughs> That's its head right there. And it like has a little saddle on and its tail springs up there. And then it has its two little legs. There we go, you can totally see it. You know. I work, I've done one of these for my daughter out of scrap yarn, and in hers too, I couldn't really, I was afraid that it really wasn't showing up well enough um, when it's close up and you're working on it. But when I see it in the screen, I can see the horsey, <laughs> which is very nice. And this one I think has higher contrast than the one I did for my daughter, which I'm happy about. So, super excited. I am not very far from the um, split. I did the short rows in the back, and I'm not very far from splitting for my sleeves. Now, in her pattern, 
So, like I said, it's on tiny needles, but I think, yeah, it's already like just past my uh, bust line here. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to cut out any uh, car noise that comes by on the road. There haven't been too many, but uh, I'm trying to pause when a big truck or something. Or we don't really get any big trucks, but when a car actually comes by the road in front of my house. Okay. What I was saying is it doesn't look very big yet, but it is almost time to slip its sleeves. It's very exciting. And in her pattern, she has um, recommended the positive ease to be like, I don't know, something fairly low, like one to two inches, maybe three, I don't know. And I really wanted a cozy, bigger sweater, not one that's snug, because I tend to not wear tight-fitting sweaters. Like, I, I love my um, suede that I did. I did it all in one color, and it's really pretty, and I really like it. But it's a little um, tighter than I would like. I did not knit that one to pattern. I think I knitted a size too small, um, because that one actually did intend to have positive ease. So anyways, uh, one of my favorite ones that I've knit of hers has been the Sunset Highway. And I knit that one with like over 10 inches of positive ease. And I love that one. So I've definitely determined that I like sweaters that are bigger and cozier. If I'm going to put on a sweater out of wool, it tends to be because it's cold out. So I want to be cozy and not like snug and having to hold in my belly. <laughs> so anyways, this one's intended to be a tighter fitting sweater. I did not want that. So I am actually knitting a few sizes up from what my uh, measurements would require based on her pattern. And also my yarn, I have, um, it's my own yarn available on Etsy, Gabby's Knit Goodies, shameless plug. Um, coffee with cream and uh, what's this? Mexican hot chocolate. So this one is browns and reds. Rem made me think of Mexican hot chocolate, which is like a spicy hot chocolate with cayenne pepper in it. And I like, I like sweet and spicy. And this is coffee with lots of cream. Just call it coffee with cream, but coffee with lots of cream. <laughs> And the contrast is nice and high. And it's actually very similar in color to her sample. And I, I liked her sample vibe. Um, I think I posted on Instagram the other day when I posted a picture of this. I love to knit with color. It's super fun. Um, it makes it fun to watch, you know, the colors come out in the yarn. And bright and cheerful stuff is super fun. But I tend to wear more neutral, like... You know, this is just a cream color top. So this kind of satisfies both of that for me because this is definitely a color um, and this is totally a neutral, but with the color work, like I'm getting my fun color variety fix. And at the same time, I think that when I put it on, it will feel more like a neutral. So I think it's the best of both worlds, and I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, so I'm knitting a few sizes up because I want it to be big. I'm also going to extend the sleeves all the way down, probably to about right here, because I like them, like I said, I like to be cozy, um, which the pattern I think they cut off about right here. And my yarn is 400 and... 63 grams, 463 yards per 100 grams, and the sample that she used is 400 yards per 100 grams. So mine is a tad bit thinner than her yarn, so I figured if that um, reduced my gauge at all, which I haven't actually checked, but um, I'm using the recommended needle size, which I think is a four. Yeah, it's a four. Um, 
yeah, the going up a few sizes and the fact that I don't want it to be a fitted sweater, it won't be a problem at all. I don't think that my gauge is actually different than the pattern, so. But I will have to check that and make sure, just for my own knowledge. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I don't know. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. I have knit this very fast. So we'll see how the body and the sleeves go because right now it's like all the fun color work and the horse. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, she used spin cycle yarn, which is a dyed in the wool and then twisted up. And so like her background color definitely fades in and out in terms of how bold it is. And I'm, I'm excited with how, how mine's working up because it has a little less of that um, blending in with the background um, compared to hers and I I want all my hard work color work to shine and I want the horses to be visible so uh, yeah I think it has a nice balance between not being too bold of the contrast but letting the color work really show I forgot to tell you something else I'm wearing that was hand knit. It's my socks. This is my Monet Water Lilies um, sock set. See, this is difficult to show you. <laughs> I think this is like the first socks I made out of my own yarn. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> I am not, I was not a big sock knitter before dyeing up my own yarn. Um, but I've definitely become one because it's a really fun way to try out all my different colors. And so this, like I said, was my first one I did out of my own yarn. And mine comes with the, the full skein plus, um, a mini and the mini is 20 grams. And I just didn't know how far 20 grams would go, which I could have looked it up really easy, but I didn't. So I was worried that I would run out, so I didn't do the toes. And the funny thing is, is I had enough yarn to knit an entire second pair of socks with heels, toes, and cuffs on the second one. So I would have absolutely had plenty. Anyways, that's besides the point. I have one more item to show you today. Um, I have a few other things I'm working on, or at least a couple, but I don't have them out here with me this morning. Ooh, and I don't remember if I've shown you this. A friend gave me the super fancy Twizzler. It's made in Sweden. And it is a, um, like it holds yarn. I don't know if it's meant to hold two. But I put two on here like this when I was knitting uh, my dream cardigan here. Because then it made it so... Um, I could pull them both because I was knitting them together. I could pull them both off at the same time and they would spin together and not like get jumbled up in my bag. It actually worked really well for holding two yarns together. So I think it's called the Twizzler. I think um, I'll try to find uh, the details and either put them on the screen or also put them down below. Um, but yeah, it just, it spins. And if you've seen Knitting Traditions, that's the first place I saw it. She has one. Yeah. So it worked really well for holding two yarns together. But now, this is my leftover. So for this sweater, I used two um, skeins of fingering weight and two balls or skeins of the mohair. Oh, here. Two of each. And then I had all of this left over. And actually a little bit more because I've used some of it. So um, I'm thinking for an adult size, I might be able to get away with just the two skeins of each. Which that would be nice. So, anyways, I am using some of this left over from the Dream Cardigan. Oh man, <laughs> I've just started a row. This 
the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. And I started this a while ago, back. I was really excited about it. I used um, some a mini skein set that I had that had um, this one is uh, Mermaid Lagoon. Um, Oh, Aurora Borealis. I think this is the that bloom colorway, and this is um, was a deep purple that I made specifically for the colorway. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, and then this is a Monet water lilies. So I started with those and thoroughly enjoyed knitting that up, and then um, I kind of put it aside. I don't know. I didn't know what yarn to add to it next, and I was working on other things, and it was, maybe it was summertime, I don't know, so I put it down, and then we went to the beach for a few weeks ago, and I was really looking for a mindless knit, and I just finished, finished some socks, um, which I don't have out here, I'll have to do that next time, um, and so I was scrounging around trying to find a mindless knit, and I found this. And then I found some scraps, so I decided to um, bring that. And some of my scraps are mohair, and I absolutely love it. So I added mohair here, just the regular white mohair here. And then it's, I feel like the color might be blowing out. This is strawberry kiwi. And then I had a tiny bit of pink cotton candy mohair that I added to it. And then this is um, leftover from the cardigan, the, that bloom colorway again. Um, so right now I'm just knitting off of cardigan leftovers. And I think I will do a little bit more this color and then I'll add a little bit more of the white mohair. Um, isn't that pretty? I really like it. And I'm still going wider, but I think that I might start to reduce because I feel like this could be used as a little throw, but it could also be used as a, um, like folded in half and used as like a, um, a shawl when you go places. Yeah. Anyways, so I have been, I have re-fallen in love with this blanket knitting. It is soothing and easy and something I can just like pick up and knit. And then adding that mohair, it provides this sheer but fuzzy, just super fun quality to it. My daughter has decided to sneak up on me. So, ooh, because she's here, maybe she can show you her cardigan. But last thing I want to say about this, I was going through, if you watched my last episode, it was I was just sorting through my yarn. I decided to film it so you guys could check out my whole yarn stash. Um, I have a bunch of minis in micro skeins that um, sometimes I will use to test out colorways um, that I do, and I haven't done much with them. But I was thinking I have a strawberry lemonade here, and I thought that that would be super fun to add to it because I have my strawberry kiwi there, and this would add a nice pop of color. And then the sky before the rain. Also, I think this one might be 10 and this one's 20. So I was thinking I could use these. So if I did my white mohair, and then I added strawberry kiwi next to that and then maybe some more mohair because I have a good amount of mohair. The mohair goes a long way um, and then I could add this after that. Yeah, so I have my next few stripes planned out. I think this pop would be super fun. So those are my current knitting plans. I have a hat going, a sock head hat that actually Ashley suggested that I knit but that is in the car at the moment, so.
now we'll have our guest here on the podcast, my daughter, who I made the cardigan for, a surprise guest, surprise to me. Come on over, Kason. Hey, I'm going to put this on. Now, I haven't actually blocked the cardigan. And I've read that steaming is better for mohair than like a wet block. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I think that blocking it would help the collar lay a little flat because the collar does tuck under just a bit. She doesn't care though. Mm. Do you? It's so soft. You got to speak loud in there. You got to be heard above all the birds. <laughs> Tell me what you think of it. I like it. Yeah? It's soft. Yeah? Do you bring it places? Yeah. Does it feel like a warm hug from mommy? Not the exact thing. <laughs> Do you want to stand up? There you go. Oh, we need to back it up, don't we? All right. Ta-da! It's lovely. 